Hey, how's it going? This is Dan and that is Asia. We have a new band called Two. And we're hanging out with Rob at Front Row Live. When I first listened to In This Rough, I like instantly like got hooked on it. Uh, you know, the vocals, the verses, the, the, the video, um, everything about this project like really made me just fall in love from the get-go. Can we talk a little bit about Two and like uh, the idea behind this project and you know how this project kind of happened for the two of you? Yeah, Dan, do you want to start or do you want me to start? <laughs> um, well, I'll, I'll just, I'll give you a little intro. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Asia and I have been, you know, we obviously were in a band called Nico Vega together. So we've been making music together for, you know, over 10 years. Um, so, you know, I know Asia creatively, I'd say very well at this point. And I also know her personally really well. So it's, I think like, I know when Asia's in the zone creatively and I know when she's not, you know, and, uh, you know, about, year and a half or two years ago, uh, I got a call from her and she basically said, uh, she asked me if I ever had marriage trouble <laughs> to which I said, yeah, of course. And, um, she kind of let me know that she and her, her husband were having a tough time and that they were taking a break. And she told me she wanted to work on music. And so I uh, got on the first flight I could because I just knew that whatever she was going to do was going to be really great. And um, yeah, and she was just in it and she was pumping out ideas. And, you know, I flew to Las Vegas where she was living at the time. And it was just full steam ahead. And I hadn't seen her like that in a long time, you know, and, and Asia, when she's in the zone, I mean, I can't think of anybody who works quicker and, you know, more confidently and uh, more aggressively. It's kind of like a, a, a an engine that can't be stopped. Um, uh, so yeah, so we just started writing music and, and in about two or three months, we, we, you know, we had a lot, lot more songs than we're releasing on this upcoming EP. And uh, yeah, so that was kind of the genesis of this project. And I think there was, you know, it's, it's definitely a thing when you take uh, a band, like two people who are in a band already, and you're starting another band and it's, you know, there's kind of like, well, it's what, what's the line between uh, this band and the old band. And it's, you know, kind of, so there was a, a, a little bit of us kind of finding like, what do we really want to say that feels fresh? But at the same time, I think we really wanted to get back to our roots as well. Um, so I, I like to think that this, uh, this music is something that Nico Vega fans would react to and appreciate. But also I think we've learned a lot as songwriters. We've learned a lot as producers and, and artists, and we have a lot of experience at this point. So uh, there, that's, that's my version of the Genesis. Since you guys have that kind of chemistry between the two of you for so long with working together in a pro in a band, you know, how different is it this time around when you guys, start working on material and uh you know are writing music together Did, was it much different from nico vega i think it's actually uh easier in the sense that there's only two cooks in the kitchen um also we cultivated a pretty close relationship we're kind of like brothers and brother and sister in a way because we spent so much time in a van together like talking about life for so many years and um so we're pretty honest with each other and it's really i think 
the one hurdle that we both sort of initially had to approach was to not carry any residual um, hurt, you know, patterns from the old project. Cause when you have relationships, you know, it's like you can quickly stress each other out or do things like when you have like a, a long time working relationship. And I think there were just so many components going on with Nico Vega um, that were actually pretty stressful. And it was at a completely different time in our lives as well. So it came from originally, you know, a place of needing to do it for survival purposes. And that makes everybody a little bit more desperate to make things happen or work. Or, and so you can put a lot of pressure on each other and on yourself. And so not carrying those patterns into this project was like initially a hurdle, I think, that quickly kind of passed. And now I feel like we're sort of rediscovering what it was like to be younger and when we originally discovered music and we're, we were doing it for fun and we were kind of finding our voice and saying, wow, we can actually do anything like we are in control of this. Like Nico Vega kind of got out of our control in a way. It became um, something that was hard for us to navigate because there were so many people pushing us in different directions. And so this is really refreshing because we're just both kind of like, what do we want to do? Like, you know, and there's no like buddy saying, oh, you shouldn't do a song that sounds like that. Or, you know, that's too heavy for today's market or whatever. Like we've heard in the past, you know, I think we're also just better songwriters and produce. He's a, a fantastic producer, which he's discovered over the last 10 years. And um, we are, we're really good at pushing each other, you know, and I live here and my, I live with Dan, my husband, who's fantastic songwriter. And since, you know, we've been married, we've been constantly pushing each other to write better. And, you know, like we work on his material, he helps me with mine. And so I've had like quite literally like a master songwriting class for the last 10 years of my life, you know, and I think, you know, whether or not, you know, I, it's helped me to like craft things, you know, and, um, communicate. And it's funny cause you also have to unlearn certain things when you learn more about music, you have to be like, well, I want to write a song that feels just like my emotion. I don't want to like follow this format or do this thing or be chasing this hit vibe or whatever, you know, but you kind of learn all those like ins and outs and so both Dan and this Dan on the call and I we've just kind of been studying and doing and you know figuring out and cultivating and now this is sort of the product of that do you feel that because uh you and Dan have collaborated together in in Nico Vega for so long do you feel like you know when you came in to write in this rough it's such a vulnerable song do you feel like that um made it easier to kind of open up to your audience knowing that Dan's been there with you from the beginning of writing music? Absolutely. Because he pushes me so much. And I think like, to be honest, you know, like I'm a really honest person, but I get very timid when it comes to like stepping on people's feet or saying something really vulnerable that might make someone else uncomfortable. You know, I'm just one of those people who doesn't love confrontation. I don't love, but at the same time, I have like a very strong voice inside of me. And I think Dan is always pushing me to do it. And he's like been there with me, you know, so he makes it really easy. And to have a partner like that, that is seeing you in your best all the time, right? Raising the bar for you to just constantly, like he knows my potential. So when I'm like not doing <laughs> my best, like he'll be like, no, you know, I know, like, I know you can do better, you know, or, you know, and I, and it's fun. It's exciting too. Like we have that whole performance thing. So when we were like doing the video and we were up there on that roof together and I'm like looking over it and we're just both like, okay, there you are. You know, it's like, we've just done it for so many times together. It feels really good, you know, to recognize that in each other. Now, Dan, you've been putting on so many hats with this project already, um, you know, as far as like the producing goes, as far as like writing and directing this music video. Um, so as we kind of talk about the music video, like what was the, you know, what kickstarted the idea of this video? And, um, you know, 
even like the outfits and like the arrows that you guys had um, or the paint that you guys had on your eyes, like what, what, what kind of initiated that for you? Um, well, I, it's, uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, honestly, two months of not leaving the house is what it was. I mean, that's a hundred percent. The video, the video was really a reaction to, to quarantine and, you know, mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest, like, uh, you know, the narrative of the video does, it does tie into the song, but conceptually, I just was like, you know, and the fact that concerts, you know, there's no kind of, we basically put on the only concert of 2020, you know, <laughs> at least out of, out of any, uh, at least outside of Texas or something. For your neighbors. Uh, yeah, we're the only, we're the only non-country concert of 2020. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just, uh, you know, my neighbor is actually a musician. Um, actually, both I've, uh, na musician neighbors up and down the street. And I just remember thinking, man, it'd be so cool if we all got on our rooftops and, and played a concert. And then, you know, and it was just like, I was like, that's a really great idea. Uh, I would rather, you know, use that idea for my own band than for anything else. And, uh, <laughs> you know, when I think along with that, there's really like, uh, it, 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 it made me really think about like, uh, you know, it was something that the entire neighborhood was a part of. Um, it was something that everybody said yes to, like everybody said yes to it, which, which would never have happened ever, ever in any other time in history. Uh, that, you know, if I knocked on these people's door and was like, can we go on your roof and like, you know, make a music video? Uh, but people were just excited to do something different. People were excited to like break up the routine. I mean, that's really the cool thing about what's happening in the world right now is we're all living the same reality. Uh, we're all, you know, I mean, across like this uh, everywhere, not just in America. And, you know, I, I think I just, uh, I'm, I'm done generally an optimistic person. And I think I, like kind of while all of this was going down and, and a lot of people around me were focused on fear and the negativity, I, I just kind of saw it as a world of opportunity um, to, to do, you know, it's like as an artist, it, to me, it's just like uh, these were just some, you know, some, constrictions that we are all of a sudden had to work inside of and it opened up new ideas um mm. and so yeah i mean and then the outfits i mean that was really uh of i mean we were uh, our friend bryn who's an incredible stylist we just went over to her house we've been working with her forever and i think asia saw these two matching dresses and i think she was just like boom and i think in that it was yeah you know and to me that's really uh symbolic of of this project and our creative flow like think decisions happen really fast and i think we really trust each other and i you know it was we were both just like all right that's cool it was a really quick decision incredibly painless yet it, in the end of the day it's a pretty bold choice um so uh yeah and even the the kind of makeup i mean that, that wasn't something that was really planned it was just a very spontaneous in the moment day of decision i think it's really also was kind of things falling into alignment because even with the clothing that we wore it happened to be that those two dresses were like um from a collection uh, designed by a friend of ours like 10, 15 years ago. And she had just had those dresses hanging and that person has since like changed their business platform and they now do wedding dresses. But it was just really interesting that like out of everything, we ended up in those clothes right. that were like designed by a friend, you know, and with, it was just really, it was, it kind of locked in, you know, all of it. Yeah. Seems like this whole, project or the process of this project has just naturally happened between the two of you mm, definitely yeah now as as you guys are 
working or you're about to release the debut EP, uh, pull the knife out. And uh, Dan, you were saying earlier that like, you know, before this quarantine COVID situation, like there was no, you know, thought process of any of this. Um, so you guys kind of just started to work on this batch of music. Um, well, well, this, uh, the, these, some of these songs, uh, were written uh before you know they were written before all this um what i was saying really was that it just i think it kind of gave us the freedom hmm. to just go for it right. um like what what i was saying is we didn't have any plan to release this music we didn't have a band name we didn't you know it was just kind of this collection of songs and i think uh yeah, I think we just realized that there was uh, there was no no reason to hold back at this point. You know, I think with, with everything that was happening, I think it just at least for me, it took away the self doubt that that goes along with uh, a new new project. So as you guys are getting ready to to drop this debut EP, like how you know what can fans expect with with this uh, body of work that you guys have worked on? Um. You know, I think what started out as feeling like it was a breakup record started to be about so much more. And I think one of the reasons is because when you go through some a traumatic experience, it, it ultimately causes you to pull from like a deeper place. And so there's sort of, the record became so much more about like femininity and self-empowerment and, um, <laughs> I can't even tell you guys what's going on over here. <laughs> I'm going to turn this around if you're not. Do it. Do it. No. Of course I wouldn't. Yo, D. <laughs> Just say hi, at least. What's up, buddy? Yeah. Um, this is a Zoom interview, by hey, the did way. He learn to, did he learn to surf as well? He's Yeah, he just got back from surfing. Oh. Um, anyway, so what ultimately started out as like a breakup record, you know, just became about so much more. And I think the record is about femininity and having a strong voice and really self-discovery and all the different stages of grief, you know, and coming into a place of like ultimate forgiveness and surrender and a letting go. And I think to me, that's sort of like the core of what life is, you know, you go through these experiences and then you realize at some point we all have to learn to let go ultimately of everything you know love is just like a small that on a smaller scale you know it's like a relationship is an example of you know our probably our most brutal lesson in learning to let go besides other than death right so like that's kind of what the record is about for me was just like coming into this place of like not being so afraid to let go because you have yourself ultimately and that, that power and finding that fire and that um, relationship within yourself is like, is the thing that needs to kind of rise to the surface, you know? So I don't know. I, I'm hoping that people kind of get strength from the record in some way, or um, I do feel like people will find, I mean, some of those songs are good songs to cry to. That's for sure. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully they're helping people soothe their emotions, you know. We're definitely going to release a lot of emotions throughout this EP. I hope so. <laughs> well, that's awesome, guys. Well, congratulations with the new project, the new music, and definitely can't wait to listen to the EP. Uh, for those out there, uh, Pull the Knife Out drops July 17th. And again, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank uh, you. Woo! <laughs>